Life is one big mental game. Today I want to talk about a mindset that I have had since 2013 that I believe can change your life if you truly internalize it. Every time I fucked it up in my life is because I deviated from this same mindset that helped me at one of the darkest moments in my life. Let's get to it. Hey, I'm Liam, CEO and founder of Submasha, a peak performance training company that transforms entrepreneurs into elite performers that can achieve in one day what they previously achieved in one week. I've coached and trained hundreds of entrepreneurs and invested in 37 of them. So today I want to talk about my story, at least one of the chapters, that essentially built me into who I am right now and has a lot to do with fully understanding life as a mental game and making the most out of it by mastering your reality, by understanding how to best look at it. And the story starts in 2012, so that's a long time ago, right? I was in my final year of my architectural schools back then, and it was my final year and my final course. So once I finished that course, I would be able to finish my bachelor. I still had two or three years of masters ahead of me, but I could at least finish my bachelor. The problem was that since it's the last course, School Projects 9, it is the final course of a series of very hard architectural projects related, which bundles together design work, engineering, and pretty much everything that constitutes the practice of architecture. So it is hard to pass it. But at that time, I had the worst professor I ever had ever, ever. Why? Because he was the head of the department. He could do as he pleased. So after four months of grueling work of pulling old nighters in order to create this fantastic project that could finally give me my liberty because the master program at architecture school, you don't need to go to the school. So it was truly the last course I was ever going to have in that school that I didn't like. He failed us. He failed 80 out of 85 students. The problem is that I lost my temper. I had poor emotional regulation because I haven't really been sleeping much during the previous four months and I said everything that I thought about him. I thought he was a genius in the architectural world but a terrible person and I told him that. A bunch of stuff that I'm not proud of I couldn't really control myself. Um, I just felt that way and, and most people that failed with me also told me that I had said what they didn't dare to say. Now the problem was that he was the head of the department so I had sealed my fate. I had to finish my architecture school somewhere else. And that implied at least doing my last year again. I shopped around all the universities in Madrid that Christmas and the best deal I got was redoing three years of coursework in order to get to the bachelor. So I had effectively fucked my chances of graduating the next year. So I was in total disarray. Life seems so unfair. Everything seems against me. And I remember that time I don't know how this, this came, but th there was a thought that came into my mind that said, this is part of the plan. This is part of the plan. This is part of the plan. I don't know where that mindset came from. Maybe from my favorite book, which is the, the Count of Monte Cristo, which is the story of a man who is wrongly accused of a crime. And all the novel is essentially him recreating his life without ever feeling sorry for himself. Or maybe it was a poem I read from Rumi saying that everything is rigged in your favor. I don't know where that, that came from, but I had like this thing in my mind. It's all part of the plan, all part of the plan, all part of the plan. But the plan was obviously failing, right? I had failed my last course. I had now to move to a different architecture school and wait for three years. Or if I stay in my same school, I need to find a way of this head of department to forget about the incident and not essentially uh, curtail my chances of graduating, which was impossible. He was the chief and he, he knew who I, who I was. So after Christmas ended, it was a sad Christmas, I went into full solution mode, trying to stay at my school and see if there was a chance of having a different academic setup, something out of the ordinary that prevented me from meeting that professor again and working with him. To make matters worse, my then girlfriend, had been given a scholarship to live in Shanghai and I wanted to go live with her in Shanghai. I had been in the city for like five or six times at that point. I really enjoyed Chinese culture. I spoke Chinese and it was just the perfect way of spending at least one semester uh, with her in Shanghai, studying Chinese, finishing my architectural coursework, st starting my master's, right? But now I could not. Now I was bound to stay in Madrid. So I didn't know what to do really, but I went to full solution mode. And after Christmas ended, I went back to school 
seeking a miracle. And a miracle happened because for the first time, there was a different professor outside of the unit of the head of the department that was going to conduct this course. So there was the ability, I had the ability to register with a new professor, which was the same professor that I had been in India three years prior. We had done an academic investigation together in the slums of Ahmedabad in Gujarat in India. So I had the chance to retake the course with someone that I knew was legit. Great guy, great architect, low ego, which is rare in architects, and overall good person. We didn't have much of a relationship anymore, but I really like his style and he was very knowledgeable. So I went to his class said, yo, um, Luis, his name, Luis, uh, here's the deal. I am going to go to Shanghai because I've been given a scholarship. I had been given a scholarship by the university, not by my school at that time. Uh, so I need to go, but I'm going to be doing this course uh, from Shanghai, which is 10,000 kilometers away. Hope you don't mind. Said, uh, well, I don't mind, but let me let me ask the head of the department. No, that, that, that was not a possibility. We were like sworn enemies, the head of the department and myself. I couldn't let the person know about this arrangement, but I had, there's nothing I could do. So I had to wait. So I waited, the January 20th came, 25th came, 28th came, and I still had no response about the possibility of flying to Shanghai and working from Shanghai. The day the class started, February 4th, 2013, I asked professor, so can I go? Do you let me live in Shanghai for four months, do all this coursework, come back and present it to you and said, well, I haven't had the chance to talk about this, so I figure you can. Imagine, I was ecstatic. I had the ability to go live in Shanghai with my then girlfriend and do this project nine. Now, the story doesn't end there because for four months I was ignored. I sent emails, sent my work several times to this professor, never received a response. I didn't know what was going on. Maybe he had talked about me with the head of the department and now I was fucked or he had forgot about me or he just didn't care enough. I had no idea of what I was going to find once they came back. And I came back at the end of May 2013 with a whole project that I've done by myself in total isolation without having any reference whatsoever, without help from any professor, something that has never done before in school. As soon as I got into the class, the professor was delighted with the work, but he said that I had one week to change all the structures that I've created in my architectural project and turn them from metallic to bamboo. He wanted the same project done in wood. The problem is that if you change the material, everything changes. Infrastructure changes, structure changes, everything changes. It's a total different project. Right? So I had to reformulate everything and had one week to do it. And I thought maybe he's playing with me. Maybe he's willing to see me fail. What is the deal here? But I had this idea of it's all part of the plan. It's all part of the plan. Trust the process, all part of the plan. And I realized that I had no time to change it. So I doubled down on metallic structure. I created big designs proving that my solution that I have done by myself. Remember, I was still a student worked in metallic and not bamboo and it worked. I was able to pass that course. First time in history that someone who had never attended a class was able to pass working on his own. Now the story gets better because remember that at that time I had finished the coursework. I was free from school, but I still needed to complete my master's degree. And that would take between two and three years at that time because architecture at the time, the average was nine years, right? I was in my sixth year at that point. So I wanted a fast way out. And lo and behold, another miracle happened. For the first time, this same professor, Luis, was assigned to the masters. So I could choose him as my tutor. And I told him, can I do this project in six months instead of three years? And he told me, well, you've already proven that you can work by yourself very fast. If you do the project with the minimal level of quality in six months, I'll be happy to introduce it to the final jury. And this is when my interest in performance optimization started because for the following seven months, I worked, and I'm not kidding, because I track my time between 12 and 16 hour days every single day with full performance. No time for social media, no time for anything that was not creating the absolute best project that I had ever created, which has a metallic structure that would host internal refugees in China. I'm going to put images of the project. It was pretty cool. Seven months, all in, more than 300 hours of work every single month. 
no days off. And when the time came in March 2014, I was ready. And I was able to do in six months what most people took between two and three years. That's because I was lucky to have a good professor, but also I fully trusted the voice in my head. It's all part of the process. It's all part of the process. It's all part of the process. Believe that this is the path you need to follow and fucking follow it. That's what I did. Of course, when I finished my architectural school, I was destroyed spiritually, mentally, physically. I truly was destroyed. It took me like a month to recover of the incredible effort that I've done for so many months, but it was well worth it. And that's how the story ends. 15 months after telling the head of the department in my architectural school that he was a terrible human being, I had graduated. I had comprised three years and a half in 15 months because I truly believed it was possible. So if you're going through a hard time, if you believe that the deck is stuck against you, keep pushing. It's all part of the plan. If you truly believe it so, never feel sorry for yourself. Push, 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 push till God or the universe or whatever it is that you believe in grants you what you want because you cannot defeat someone who is relentless in the pursuit of its goal. So why not become relentless yourself? It worked for me and it will most certainly work for you. And I can assure you that every time that I have fucked it up since then, since 2014, all my bad years have come because I forgot this fundamental lesson. It all happens for us, not to us. It's our job to leverage reality to achieve what we want. See you in the next video.